So today we're going to start out with lesson 9.5, which is where we left off in your packets. So get your packets ready, open up to lesson 9.5, and we'll get started. Okay guys, so you're going to have to bear with me a little bit in terms of the lighting and the setup and everything. For now, this is the best I can do, so hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to get a better setup um, as we do more lessons. Um, so I know it's a little bit blurry right now and a little bit dark, but we'll work on it. So first we're starting out with our first question in your packet. You're given a model, a tape diagram, um, to model the question that has to do with the recycling plant. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out two-thirds divided by 12. You can take a look at the modeling example yourself. I'm going to show you the way that we've been doing it in class. So when we're dividing fractions, regardless of whether the fraction is first or second, whether it's the dividend or the divisor, we're going to follow our rule of keep, change, and flip. So we keep the first number the same. So the 2 thirds stays as 2 thirds. We change the division into multiplication, and we flip the second number. When we're dividing by a whole number, that of course then begs the problem. What on earth are we going to do if we don't have a denominator? How are we going to do the flip if we don't have a denominator? So remember that you can always write a whole number as an improper fraction by putting it over 1. So when you do your flip, which is really the reciprocal, remember that you're just flipping the top and the bottom. So in order to take the reciprocal of a whole number, you just put it over 1, and then you can flip it. So the 12 becomes 1 over 12. Okay. Now we're going to use Ms. Moreno's handy-dandy simplifying trick. So we look diagonally from the numerator in the first to the opposite denominator and see if there's a common factor that we can cancel out. So from 2 and 12, I know that there's a common factor of 2. So the way that we do this, for any parents who might be watching, we look at the two numbers, we decide what basically the GCF is, and then we simplify it before we start multiplying. So I know that 2 can be divided by 2, and that gives me 1. And I know that 12 can be divided by 2, and that gives me 6. Looking in the opposite direction, the 1 and the 3, they're both prime numbers. They don't have anything in common besides 1. So now I can begin to multiply straight across. 1 times 1 is 1, and 3 times 6 is 18. And I get my final answer of 118. I know that that's fully simplified because the numerator is 1. That's a unit fraction, and unit fractions are always fully simplified. Okay guys, so now we're going to move on to the practice. Um, the first section that we have here, we've got some fill in the blanks, which I know we don't always love. So basically they're walking us through the steps here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the first question of each of the following sections, and you can do the rest of them yourself. If you feel confident enough to move on, then you can just go on to the classwork which will follow. So for the first section, what they want us to do is fill in these blanks. We're starting off with the problem. 5 eighths divided by 2, then they're giving us 5 eighths divided by 2 over something. So what should I put in that denominator? My goal is to end up with a reciprocal. So in order to get that, I need a denominator. So I'm going to put the 2 over 1. The next step would be to use keep, change, flip. So I'd be keeping my 5 eighths, changing my division to multiplication, and then flipping my 2 over 1 to 1. Now it's time to multiply. I look diagonally to make sure I can't use my trick. In this case, there's nothing in common between the 2 and the 5 or the 1 and the 8, so I just multiply straight across. 5 times 1 is 5 over 8 times 2 is 16. Now I know that 5 16 is fully simplified without worrying about it because my numerator is a prime number and the denominator is not a multiple of that prime number. I can be sure that I fully simplified. For number four, we're skipping to the next chunk of questions. You can do um, two through three on your own. Five, they're asking us just to rewrite the problem as a multiplication by the reciprocal. So we're doing the keep, change, flip, but we're not solving. So we're going to do keep, change, flip. We're going to keep that five eighths. We're going to change the division to multiplication, and we're going to flip the two. In order to do that, I'm going to put it over 1, and it becomes 1 over 2. And as you can see, 
I've got my number here. We already did it, so we already know what the answer is going to be. But now we've written it as multiplication by the reciprocal. That's all you have to do for that chunk of questions. So from there, you could do 5 through 8 by yourself. And we'll skip over to number 9. And this question is asking us to fully divide. So again, nothing crazy here, guys. We're just using keep, change, flip. And of course, should have prefaced this before, but just to remind everyone, the reason why we use keep, change, flip is because when we're dividing by fractions or dividing fractions at all, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, which you heard me say a thousand times by now. And if you need the reminder, the reciprocal is when you take the numerator and the denominator and you flip them. The numerator becomes a denominator, the denominator becomes a numerator. All right, so now we're going to keep this four fifths. Can you still see down there? It's okay. Change the division to multiplication, and we're going to flip this three, which is really a three over one, to a one third. Again, I check diagonally. I've got nothing in common, so I multiply straight across. This gives me four times one, which is four, over five times three, which is 15. Okay, and I know I'm simplified because in this case, the denominator and the numerator have nothing in common. They have no common factors at all. All right, guys, so that's that. Hope that helped. Now you can go on to your classwork, which is listed under your daily agenda. It's in the packet, I believe. And once you finish that, you can go on and do that homework assignment, which is only a few questions, if I recall. So if you need any help, just post a comment on Google Classroom on something that I posted. Make sure it's not just on the stream or I won't get a notification. Okay, guys, have fun.